What's up YouTube, Del here from Zephyr, and today I'm bringing an update to a good old classic TCG exclusive in the form of Cosmo. So for those of you that are brand new to Cosmo, they are a TCG exclusive based off of the back of Wizard of Oz and of course Star Wars. Now the deck got some indirect support thanks to Phantom Nightmare, which I'll take you through once we get to them, but the deck is still incredibly fun to play. It also had more recent reprints in one of the premium gold sets a couple of years ago and should be relatively cheap and easy to pick up, but when you get to the extra deck, that's where it might get a little bit costly, so keep that in mind. With all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. Diving headfirst into the profile, we'll start off with the pilots first. Now, the way that Cosmos work is they have a range of pilots, which is what I'm going to be referring to, that then can be able to go into some of the machines, which is mainly the planes or the ships and everything else. So all of them share relatively the same effect for the pilots, is that during either player's turn you get to banish the card to special on a level for a higher Cosmo monster from your hand, and then with the machines is if they are destroyed they go into a lower leveled monster, so they work their way up and work their way down. Now Farm Girl is your OTK enabler, and the reason we're playing two of this is because of the brand new card, as a bit of a preview now, of Psychic Processor. This allows you to special summon by banishing it, up to two machine, Psychic and or Cyverse from the hand, and they can attack directly. So Farm Girl's effect is if it inflicts damage to your opponent, or specifically battle damage, you pay 500 life points to add a Cosmo card from the deck to the hand. The reason that is so important is you can start getting into your big boss monsters in the form of Dark Destroyer, which allows you to destroy a card when it is summoned, but it also gives you the ability, as you've got a quick effect of Farm Girl, to tag out, to go into Dark Destroyer. Dark Destroyer can then destroy one of your cards, ideally a ship, and that's how you're instigating the OTK capabilities, as well as destroying your opponent's monsters as well. We've then got two Strawman, so as you can see, these are all um, Psychics. For those of you that are unfamiliar, obviously Farm Girl is based off of Dorothy from Wizard of Oz, and of course like Luke Skywalker, uh, and then of course Strawman is of course um, Scarecrow, as well as BNC Freepio. I won't explain all of the kind of references as we go, but they should be relatively obvious. So Strawman has the ability, again, quick effect to banish it to special summon at level three or higher. Uh, and then of course, what this will allow you to do is you pay 500 life points to target one of your banished Cosmo monsters and special summon it. However, it's effects negated and you destroy it during the end phase. So that's when you're gonna be able to utilize the effects of when it's destroyed, it will float because it will use its effect that way. We've then got the one tin can. Now, usually tin can obviously can become R2-D2 uh, and obviously the tin man, but this one is more prominent in other builds, more of a control sense, because the idea behind this build is we want to be as aggressive as possible. So again, this has the ability to tag out for a level two or higher, but during the end phase, you pay 500 life points to reveal three Cosmo cards with different names from the deck. Your opponent randomly picks one of them to add to the hand and you send the rest to the graveyard. So as you can see, it's a little bit slower, and that's where another of the new cards in the form of Psychic Arsenal comes into play to allow that search capability to be a little bit faster and get you directly to what you may or may not want. Uh, for the other pilots, of course, we've got Sword Troopers, so the Flying Monkeys, and of course, um, Stormtroopers, <laughs> pretty much says it in the name. Again, can tag itself out for a level four or higher Cosmo. You pay a thousand life points to target a Psychic type monster in the graveyard and special summon it, so it allows you to get back one of the pilots, being Tin Can, Strawman, or Farm Girl. And then of course you've got Wicked Witch, double-ended lightsaber being Darth Maul, and of course the Wicked Witch of the West. So during either player's turn, you get to banish this card to special summon a level five or higher. And then of course, once per turn during either player's turn, you get to pay a thousand life points and it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects, which is really important if you do need to wall up. For the last pilot, we are playing the one Cosmo Dark Lady, hello Darth Vader. Uh, so this one is during either player's turn, again, banish it, especially someone at level six or higher Cosmo from the hand, and you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. During either player's turn, you get to pay a thousand life points when another monster effect is activated to negate the activation and destroy it. So you can see that we're trying to keep the pilots at the minimum because the idea is that we really want them to be tagging out and going into the ships. Speaking of the ships, we do play the one Slip Rider, so X-Wing, and then if this card is normal or special, you get to target a spell trout on the field and destroy it, but if it's destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you get to banish this card from the graveyard to special on a level four or lower Cosmo. So that's how the ships then start reverting back into the pilots. Uh, Forerunner, so obviously uh, the Millennium Falcon, can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects, very nice. And then during the standby phase, you gain a thousand life points or your standby phase to be precise. If it is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you get to banish this card from the graveyard, especially on a level six or lower Cosmo. Now obviously back in the day when these were running rampant, 
Um, there wasn't really Ash Blossom around. I think Ash Blossom came out like two or three sets after this. So it does really get hit by that. But that's something you need to keep your eyes on. And that's why we play stuff like Call by the Grave as well. Uh, then of course we've got the one Dark Eclipser. Again, can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects. During the player's turn, when a trap card is activated, you get to banish a Cosmo monster from the graveyard to negate the activation and destroy it. And if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you get to banish this card from the graveyard to add a level eight or lower Cosmo monster from the deck to the hands. So this is the only one that wanted to be different from the rest. All of the rest turn into the lower levels, whereas this one just lets you add it. And then of course the Mac Daddy boss monster of the entire deck is Triple Dark Destroyer. So if this card is normal or special, you get to target a monster on the field and destroy it. It can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects. And if it is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you get to banish this card from the graveyard to special on a level seven or lower Cosmo monster. So the idea is that you'd pretty much go through Farm Girl, attack directly, get this added. Attack with Farm Girl, add something like Forerunner, then use Farm Girl to special summon down Forerunner, attack with Forerunner, Farm Girl to special summon Dark Destroyer, destroy the Forerunner, Forerunner would then tag into Slip Rider, you're attacking again for another 3k and another 23. So that's how you're kind of instigating the OTK. It can be done in other ways as well. We are playing three of the field spell. Now you can of course play one terraforming if you want to, but this one gives you the ability to recycle some of the cards in the hand as they can get a little bit bricky when they're level fives or highs and draw you some fresh cards. So once per turn you get to target one of your banished Cosmo monsters, return it to the hand, and if you do, you lose life points equal to its original level times 100. And then once per turn you get to reveal any number of Cosmo monsters in the hand, shuffle them into the deck, and then draw cards equal to the number of cards shuffled into the deck. If this card in the field zone is destroyed by card effect, you get to add a Cosmo card from the deck to the hand. So it technically acts like multi-roll, uh, not multi-roll, um, the field spell for Sky Strikers, before Sky Strikers had a field spell. And the last Cosmo card we play is the one Cosmojo. So you target a Cosmo monster, you control, destroy it, and if you do, you banish one of your opponent's cards, um, or in their graveyard. You can only activate once per turn, and again, the reason this is a one-off is because we're not playing the control version of the deck, we're playing a much more aggressive OTK version of the deck. Whereas if you wanted to play control, you'd play Cosmojo, you would swap out, preview, um, your Super Polys for stuff like the Dear Servants, and that's when you're gonna get a bit more control. Moving on to the first brand new card of the deck, that is Triple Psychic Processor. Now the only reason I'm playing three of this is because I am playing Allure of Darkness, but arguably you can play this at one if not two, because you get the ability to banish this card you control to special up to two machine, psychic and or cybers monsters from the hand, and they get to attack directly. During the standby phase of the next turn after this card was banished, you get to add it back to your hand. You can only use each effect once per turn. So it does recycle itself, which is really nice. And it doesn't need to be banished by its own effect, which is why technically if you have multiple of these, you can allure one away. And then during the next standby phase, you get to add it back, which is really, really nice. It's also the reason because it is a psychic and it is very easily summonable off of the back of Emergency Teleport, a questionable reason why you could play it less if you wanted to. Um, ultimately, it's not a bad thing to open it up with it because e Telly can also get you access to your Farm Girl and your Straw Man because they are also level three or lower psychics as well. Another new card that we are playing is Triple Psychic Arsenal. So you get to target a psychic monster you control and pay life points equal to the levels times 200 to add a machine monster with the same attribute but is a higher level from the deck to the hand. So the best thing about that is all of your pilots are lights and darks and so are your machines. So any of your dark pilot can get you into a dark machine. Any of your light pilots can get you into your light machine. So Millennium Falcon and X-Wing and then of course you've got your Dark Destroyer and the Dark Eclipser. So you're getting pretty much the best of everything you need. On top of that as well, is during the main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you get to banish it from the graveyard. To target one of your banished psychic and machine monsters, place one of them on the bottom of the deck, and if you do, you add the other to the hand. So again, you can only activate, uh, use each effect once per turn, but that's where a Lore of Darkness comes into play, because you just have ways, if you wanted to grind the game out a little bit, to recycle your resource almost endlessly. And then of course Triple E Telly, because not only can you use this for Farm Girl and everything else, but obviously you can use it for the brand new um, Psychic Processor as well. Speaking of Psychic Monsters, Cash Tira Fenrir. Not only can you special summon it for free should you want to, but if you get into this later on in the turn for a draw effect or anything else, it's also a Psychic Monster that can be summoned off of the back of your Processor. Now I did consider playing other Cash Tira cards in here, because you could play stuff like Unicorn, you could play uh, Scareclaw Cash if you wanted to, Tear Cash, you name it, um, because they can obviously all be summoned off of the back of the Psychic Processor as well. But only I went with Fenrir as an aggressive option. If you want to play more defensively, you can play more hand traps, more control cards, you have flexibility. Speaking of hand traps, we are playing Triple Imperm, uh, followed up by Triple Super Poly, 
and the one called by. So as you can tell, just through this selection of cards, it is definitely built to be more aggressive than it is defensive. Um, Cosmos back in the day were known for being incredibly good at OTK, and that's where you get cards like your Dark Destroyer and everything else. Cosmojo is probably the only real control card they got that is effective enough, and that's why you need to splice it with other engines in the form of the Dogmaticas if you wanted to play a bit more control. Moving on to the extra deck. So as you notice, we play lights and darks, which means you can utilize Chaos Angel quite well. Now, obviously more times than not, you're probably gonna to wanna to be using your monster's effects to tag out rather than just going into Chaos Angel. But when you have the ability of using something like a Dark Destroyer plus a Straw Man to make this with both of its effects intact, it can be very, very important. You do have other combinations as well. I believe it is Tin Can and... Once I find it, Eclipser. If I remember rightly, Eclipser should be a nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah, cool. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad I remember that bit. So you've got Tin Can and Eclipser. You also have Farm Girl. Well, technically, actually, I've already skipped one, but it should be Dark Lady and Slip Rider, so five and five. And then you've got your Farm Girl. And now, annoyingly, these aren't darks, but you can get your Farm Girl and your Forerunner, so light and light. Um, if you do need a dark for that one, you do have access to, wherever it may be, your Sword Trooper. So there you go, Sword Trooper Forerunner gives you the light and dark protection of Chaos Angel. And that's kind of what you want to be aiming to do if you're ever going to make Chaos Angel is to max out its effects where it's all possible. Uh, then of course we've got our Super Poly targets in the form of the Agnista, uh, Mud Dragon, Starving Venom, Garura, and of course Predator Plant. Now the extra is actually really flexible. You could, if you really, really wanted to, play um, Part of Extravagance but it does clash with a lore, which is a little bit better in my opinion for this particular build of the deck. Um, and then of course you could also consider stuff like, um, so extra, and it will also clash with the field spell as well. But the idea is that you can max out on your super poly targets. If you feel that your local environment is more uh, weakened by Garura, you can max this out at two or put this at two, put Mud Dragon at two. You can adapt these as you see fit. The only XYZ we play is the one Typhoon because just upgrading any of your monsters into Typhoon can be really helpful. Uh, anima, because the only card we can use to get into this is Tin Can, but the other is if your opponent is a little bit lazy and puts it in the wrong position, e Telly, Anima, uh, sorry, e Telly, uh, Tin Can, Anima, still push on from there. Uh, IP, SP, Dark Charmer, leading into Appaloosa, Zero Boros, Boral Sword, and of course Underworld Goddess. This just kind of shows the flex that you have because you can very easily be playing Nightmare Unicorn. You can max out, like I said, you can bump up your Super Poly targets. The extra is really very irrelevant. Like the only one that you like full on could play if you wanted to uh, is your Chaos Angel. And then everything else then comes down to what build you're particularly trying to play. Like I said, if you want to be playing, just so I make sure I don't run over one of my cards. Um, if you wanted to be playing, well, Dracus player, that would have been bad. <laughs> if you wanted to be playing more control build, then you'd be using the Dogmatica package, and that's when you'd start using more Garuras. You'd also look into playing the Shadol package because you have the space to do so, which would be send App Clone off of Maximus, search out Schism. Schism can then set you up with a Winder during your turn as well. You also have uh, the Tista pop cards, you've got Pack Bit, you've also got um, any of the other cards that the Dogmaticas can utilize to get the most effects in the graveyard as well. But that is it for the updated Cosmo profile. I hope this has given you an idea of your own build. Adapt it as you see fit. Unfortunately, it is not the meta contender that it once was. But if you are a fan of Wizard of Oz or Star Wars, which this one probably leans a little bit more to the Star Wars side, in my opinion, it's definitely a deck that you would like to have just for pure, like, how it looks and the lore that is behind it. Still an incredibly fun deck, very, very entertaining to utilize. And definitely if you're facing players that are unfamiliar with this deck, it can catch them off guard and be very, very cool. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Any questions, by all means, put them in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. But for now, as absolutely always, stay safe and of course, happy dueling.